welcome back. It has been a while since we have had this guest star, my mother, in a video. And it's also been a while since we have done a really good in-depth tutorial on tumblers. So today I'm gonna walk you through how to do a cellophane tumbler with artist resin overlay. All right, you guys, so we're gonna start with one tumbler and it's gonna be stainless steel. What you're gonna do to prep that tumbler is you're going to spray paint it with a white matte and you wanna make sure that it's a matte spray paint so it really grabs onto those other colors. You're gonna let that dry and then you're just gonna do bursts of color. This are these are just the colors that we like um, that I use the most of. So it's a purple, teal, and pink if you wanna follow along with this tutorial and do it exactly like this one. Um, and there's really no um, pattern to this. Just Mother, random. Just, just random, random. Random spray bursts of this and it doesn't have to be perfect. The only thing that you don't want is you don't want runs or drips. So when you spray paint your cups, always remember to do a super lot, less is more kind of thing. It's better to build it than to try to get it all done in one go. Exactly. All right, so the next step is going to be your cellophane and this is where things get fun. So mother is going to walk you through the cellophane process and that is after this step. So to recap, you're going to start with a stainless steel tumbler. You are going to spray paint it a matte white, let it dry. You are going to burst spray with your favorite colors and then we're going to start the cellophane process. So the cellophane that you are going to be using comes from Amazon and I'm going to link everything that you need in the description box. Most of the things that we use are from counterculture, but the cellophane comes from Amazon. It's really inexpensive. And I have to give props to Misty Leonard for this idea. We were talking on the phone one day about some ways to add depth to tumblers and she said, I really wanna do a cellophane cup. So I have to, give a tip of the hat to Misty for this idea. So once you open your cellophane, you are just going to cut it with scissors into strips. You cannot mess this up. This is an imperfect cut. I don't know if you can see really, it has jagged edges, but the thing is, is that once you cut this, maybe a couple of inches wide, you are going to crinkle it into a ball. So, it does not matter whatsoever how you cut it or what it looks like. What you want is that texture. So the more you crinkle it, the deeper your texture is going to be. And now we can start applying the cellophane to the cup. Now, can I just add this? When you unroll your paper, you'll see that the grain of this, the color grain, it kind of goes horizontal or vertical. So I kind of did a mixture of both. So it's not going to look, it's going to be even more textured looking by combining the two. But when you are cutting it, be sure that you don't tear these edges because that's what gives your little nubbies that sticks up and they're very hard to get off. They're hard to cover with epoxy. They are hard to cover with epoxy. So let's get started. We're going to start out with the quick coat. Now, I just pour just an amount. There's no measurement of that. And when we get through, we can always pour it back into the container. So just put you a coat. You want to go a little wider than the strip that you cut. Get in the camera angle. And, and you do have um, time. Mother, you need to get more into camera angle. More center. There you go. And you do have time for placement. Until it dries? Until it dries. Now, if you'll notice, I do this without gloves because it will wash off with water. You're out of camera angle. Or you can wash off with alcohol. And then once I get it on, I take a little more and I kind of quickly go over. And it just kind of smooths a little bit, rubs the edges down. 
And don't worry about your overhang because that can be trimmed even uh, while it's wet or after it dries. Then I go back again. So the quick coat isn't harmful to your hands? No. It's just sticky. And the little water that I have here, I just kind of do that so my hands won't stick to themselves or stick where they don't need to stick. Okay, then we take another strip. The instructions on the quick coat do, do say to wear gloves. So mom is no, I'm a rebel. Mom's being a rebel. She's practicing at her own risk. So what can I say? You can always wear gloves with the quick coat, but mom mm -hmm. does her cups a lot like her cooking. There is no right ingredient. She just kind of throws things together. But I do wear the gloves when I do the epoxy. You'll see I just kind of overlapped, made sure that I had a quick coat on it. And if you've got a little spot, don't worry. This is really a no mess type thing to do. Now, the first time I did one, I cut it in little, little squares, little chunks, and it was a pain in the butt. So this is a lot easier, it goes a lot faster, and your sides even lie down better. Harlow's gonna giggle that you said but. Uh oh, was that a blooper? So you're gonna have the texture and you're gonna have it raised in some spots or crinkled. The epoxy is self leveling and once you put a couple of coats of epoxy on your cup, you're not going to feel that texture, but you will see it. Now, if you'll notice, I kind of overlap from my other strip. Easy peasy. You really can't get this wrong. No. One pro tip that I'd like to touch on, a uh, question that I answer a lot, is what about the inside of the cup when you're working on tumblers? The inside of the cup has no relevance right now. Once you get this cup finished, you're going to clean out the inside of the cup. And I have a video of that on the channel. You're going to trim this cellophane. You're going to cut out your extra epoxy and then wipe down with acetone. It gets off of, it gets all of the spray paint off. And then your cup is finished after with some soap and water. Okay. For time's sake, what I found that was the easiest thing to do, I just let my scissors lie on the rim of the cup. And don't worry if you've got a little over because that will loop over, wrap over. Then I took some smaller ones. The same thing. Oops. And I also found it's kind of hard to cover this circular bottom. So what was easier for me was on your cellophane, if you'll kind of leave a point, maybe like triangular, <coughs> and put the triangle over the edge. Rub down, and you can kind of manipulate it to where it will conform to the cup. But the triangular does help a lot. Now, if you'll see here, my hands are getting sticky. Just have you a little water handy. Or wear gloves. Or wear gloves. But I'm going to tell you guys, the gloves stuck to the cellophane. But what I like about the quick coat it's easy cleanup afterwards. I just used warm water and uh, dish soap to clean the brush with and also to wash my hands with. Now, if you'll see how this is doing, of course, we're doing a little faster. Can we get the heat going, Holly? <coughs> I'll link this heat gun for you guys, too. It has two speeds, a slow and a fast. Which one would you rather have? I just used the fast. This will help 
lay the uh, cellophane down a little bit closer. And kind of shrink it. It kind of shrinks it to, a, to an extent. You don't want to burn it. Okay, you can't talk while you have this going. So that's why I wanted you to say Well, it. okay. Now he'll probably speed this part up, so take your time. Which we're not going to do this whole cut. Okay. We've got one that's finished. Can you show the bottom? Because that's what I would be concerned about. Do this on the bottom. Oops. That's okay. <laughs> My fingers are a little sticky. They're not going to hear this because I have the heat going. Okay. And he can cut that yeah, part. Cut this part out. Yeah. So it doesn't look like it fell off. It don't matter. It, it, it falls off. It's so, it's so flimsy and so airy and lightweight. Like me. Heat gun. See how it shrinks, Rip? Yeah. It's like shrink wrap on the. But it seals it in. Are we recording? Yeah, it's recording, but the heat gun is going to take most of the audio, so. Okay. So. Yep. This is what it's looking like, and we'll just continue around. Now, when I complete it, I'll put, I don't know, maybe two little strips down, then I'll do the uh, heat gun. And if you've got places sticking up, just put you a little more of the quick, quick coat. coat. And when I completely finish it, I put a very uh, good layer of quick coat over it. And then I just take my hands when it gets a little more tacky. And you squish it. And I squish it. Because trust me, believe me, you want to get those edges down because that's going to be less sanding down the road. Now if you do have a couple of raised edges after you've done your first layer of epoxy, you can lightly sand. Or you can take scissors and lightly trim off the little things that are sticking up. Now, you've got to be careful. If you do cut too much and you do see a little exposure uh, of the cut, look, you can always do an overlay for that area and it just blends right in. Keep a bowl of water handy and you can just blend right in. I always make a uh, coat an area that's wider than the piece of uh, cellophane. Then we'd heat gun that. Then you would heat gun. Yep, work our way around the cup, do work the bottom, way around. and we're on to the next step. And as you can see, the edge right here is slightly raised. That's okay, it's still in the drying process. And when I lay another layer over this, then I'll encompass this raised area into that, and it will take it down. So, here again, very important. Last, when you get completely finished with it, then the last thing you're going to do is kind of mash it down with your hands. But the biggest tip I can give you is please, when you're cutting, don't tear because it, it almost ruffles the edges and uh, they're what sticks up. Those are the things that give you will give you a problem when you get to your uh, finished coat with epoxy. So just cut you some two inch strips. Approximately. Sprinkle. They can be one inch, two inch, but enough to handle and to uh, lay down. And as you can see, I'll come back later and trim this off. Right now, I just tuck it under. And when I do trim off, I just let my scissors lie on the rim of the cup and just go all the way around. After your quick coat has dried, you are ready for epoxy. And how you know it is dried is basically just by the touch that you won't feel it. It's not tacky or sticky anymore. It's hardened and it'll be ready for epoxy. So the only epoxy I use is counterculture. I'm going to be using ultra clear fast set for this. And then they recommend that you finish your last layer off with an artist resin. 
So remember that you do equal parts A and B. And then if I have any extra epoxy left over, I just pour that into a mold. So I try not to waste any epoxy whatsoever. Okay, so equal parts A and B. Then we're going to mix those together. Scrape in the sides just to make sure that we get all of it. And then we mix. Now, some people worry about bubbles, but I know I've already talked about Misty before, but I just have to give her props because she's given me so many tips and tricks. I feel like with tumblers, you never know it all. Even though I've been doing these for years, I still learn things daily. So what she told me one time is kind of what I go by. It doesn't really matter how many bubbles you have in your cup while you stir. You just want a clear, not cloudy, epoxy mixture when you are finished. So just mix it up until it's clear. Be sure to get those sides and get the bottom. Now we have our epoxy ready to go on the cup. This cup turner came from Dino's Tumbler Turners. They are my favorite cup turners to purchase from and I will also put their link in the description. So we have the epoxy mixed. We're just going to start applying. Always be sure to use protective measures with what you are sensitive to epoxy. So you want to make sure that you're working in a well ventilated area. You're wearing gloves and if you need to have any other further protection, just do what is best for you. This is definitely going to take more than one coat of epoxy because it is textured and that's okay. With the ultra clear facet, it takes two hours to dry versus the eight hours for the artist resin. So facet really kind of changed the game because you're waiting two hours versus eight. So this is going to turn and then I'm going to show you guys how to apply the armor art. We're going to do it while this epoxy is still wet and I'm going to use this epoxy in the cup that I've already mixed up. I'm just making sure that it has an even coat around the sides, the edges and the bottom and top. Okay, I'm gonna bring in another cup. I have my Armor Art poured into, and it is thick, so you don't need much. And then I'm going to mix my epoxy in. I put enough epoxy in here that it is still going to give me some run. And now we're ready to put it on the cup. So I just take my popsicle stick and just drizzle it onto the cup. Always have a mat. I love these counterculture mats because once this epoxy has dried onto the mat, it peels off and you're able to reuse these time and time again. And then don't forget about your bottom. You can always take your popsicle stick and use it manually too. Now, mom likes a good heavy coat of Armor Art and I like a light coat. So I think this is where the artist's eye comes in and just what you prefer. So add as much or as little as you want. Now 
I'm going to use the heat gun that's gonna pop some of those bubbles in the armor art, but more than anything, I just wanna give those lines some movement. Your work time with the Ultra Clear Facet or any facet is about 20 minutes. So you have about 20 minutes from mixing to applying that it is workable and then it'll start getting dry. So we're gonna go ahead and use this heat gun. <sighs> If you have areas where it kind of blends together too much, just take your popsicle stick and you can break those up. And add those really pretty lines. And if you get too much artist resin, scrape it off. And if you get too much armor art, you can scrape it off because this is still workable. So if you get heavy handed. Then your next step is you're going to let this dry for about two hours. You can lightly sand if you have some spots that are rough and apply another coat of epoxy. So thanks guys for joining us. Thank you mom for being a special guest in this video. Be sure to show her some support by giving the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos and we will see you next time.